Hello everyone, thanks for pressing play. We are talking great comics for April 23rd, 2014. We are Excalibur Comics Cards and Games here in Shreveport, Louisiana, as well as in Texarkana, Texas. You can always visit our website at ExcaliburCCG.com. Guys, this is a longer episode, so if you are not able to watch it, go click the link down below, right down there, and go to our website, download the MP3. You can listen to us on the go. Also, be sure to like our Facebook page, friend us on there as well. And guys, thanks again for all of the interaction that we've been getting. Tons of people commenting, talking about the comics, telling us what they like, what they're wanting to read, all that great stuff. Some suggestions that have come our way, which I think we're going to implement starting with this episode. So you know who you are. So, did you have anything that you wanted to show off today besides your pretty face, Randy? Uh, not show off. Uh... I'm, I'm, I'm looking a little slim down, I think. I'm showing that off. <laughs> oh, he's, he's, he brought the sexy, baby. That's awesome. But guys... I brought it back. He brought it back. Guys, we are going to talk the great comics that are hitting for April 23rd. Uh, and also, be sure to check out our free comic book day video. We are participating in free comic book day. And the following weekend, for our locals, we will be having our mega sale. More details on that to come soon here in Texarkana here in Shreveport and in Texarkana both uh, both places will be participating in free comic book day and, and the, the mega sale yep. so it's going to be boom it's going to be an aw awesome twofer be weekend after weekend yeah free comics and then huge deals the next weekend so that's pretty awesome cool all right guys launching a new segment that we're going to make a regular one this week Randy it's all up to you bro not necessarily a regular uh we'll see <laughs> uh, when I have something to talk about. Okay, very good. What I love, what I hate. That, why I love it, why I hate it. Okay. That's, that's, that's how I say it. Uh, I'm talking about the Eisners here. Why I love it. <laughs> because you have comics like Sex Criminals, Rat Queens, and uh, people like Dragota, uh, Emerios that are getting recognition. People yeah. that maybe haven't before. Why I hate it. It seems like it's becoming more and more like the Oscars of awards. It's just, uh, you know, if you know the people, the right people, you're you're nominated here. There are some clear, uh, like, just cannot believe these people were left off the uh, nominations. And we'll get into that with our question of the week. So yes. that's why I love it, why I hate it. Great points. It introduces you to a lot of cool stuff. Yeah. But then on the other hand, it leaves off a lot of cool stuff. Yeah, so. definitely. Guys, there you have it. Why we love it, why we hate it. Guys, now we're going to talk about some of the storylines that are hitting for April 23rd. What would you like to start off with, sir? Uh, the big event is finally here from okay. Marvel Comics. We're talking about Original Sin, number zero, finally yes. comes out. What we have here is Nova mm -hmm. kind of finding out a little bit more about the Watcher. Right. Maybe he's a little shocked by what he finds out and uh, maybe what happens to the yeah. Watcher. So this will be asking and hopefully answering the question, what did he see? Yes. So that's that's our big uh, lead in here to the Marvel events. Uh, you know, this isn't something like before where we had an Ultron storyline with Ultron not there. I mean, we have a storyline that's focused on the Watcher. Hopefully we'll be able to answer what he saw. Uh, you know, it, it'll be relevant to the title and everything. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping too. If not this issue, then at least by the end of the storyline. At least by hopefully. the end there. And all the tie-ins. Yeah. Uh, so. Hopefully the tie-ins won't matter. But, yeah. I mean, you can, you can read them separately or you can read them to include Exactly. It, so. Exactly. Guys, Guardians of the Galaxy 14 hits this week. This is the celebration of... 100 issues. Actually, it's like the 101st issue is what they're saying, but because of the storyline that went on previously, they're celebrating it with this issue. With this issue, we see Brian Michael Bendis, Nick Bradshaw coming over from Wolverine and the X-Men, the stuff that he did over there, mm -hmm. to do art on, on this issue, maybe a couple of issues. And we see two new members. That's right. Venom and Captain Marvel Yeah, hitting uh, the team as well. So guys, Fans of Guardians of the Galaxy, if you if you haven't been a part of the series up until now, this is a great jumping on point. And I'm probably, I'm assuming that you're going to see some stuff starting here that will lead into the movie. Uh, you probably see a little bit more stuff that will be in line with that. So this is a great place costumes. to jump on. Your costumes, some, some makeovers. Plus, in this issue, there are two backup stories by Guardians of the Galaxy fa fan favorites, uh, Dan Abnett and Andy Lanning. Okay, awesome. So it's like a threefer right there. The main story and then two backup stories by DNA. 
Yeah. So unfortunately, I think it's probably going to be one by the one and the other by the other because they broke up. They broke up. Sad. <laughs> uh, I'm so sad about that. Uh, two real quickly. Uh, well, I'll, I'll leave that one to you. Okay. We have uh, First Contact, Batman, Superman, number nine. Right. That's number three that should have been out, somehow wasn't out. It's out now. Uh, you probably read how it ended already <laughs> in the uh, World's Finest that came out like three, four weeks ago. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's it's late, but it's out here. That's just to mention to you guys, uh, those of you who have been wondering where it's at. Yeah. Uh, there's also Superman Doom. The prelude is in Superman uh, number 30. Ooh. We see uh, Smallville. Everybody seems to be falling into a coma, while everybody in the uh, Bottle City of Candor seems to be appearing, waking up, something happening within there. Okay. I don't know if Superman can solve this mystery because he has his hands full in the heartland of the U.S. here with Doomsday. Okay. So, big things afoot. Are you excited that Doomsday's back? I, I didn't read comics back when Doomsday first appeared, so... <laughs> I remember the days. <laughs> but guys, also uh, from DC again this week, a zero issue Justice League United, number zero hitting. Uh, this was supposed to be the Justice League Canada team, but they changed it to Justice League United. Thankfully. Yes. And, but uh, there will be a focus on Canada within the series. And yeah. you've got Canadian writer Jeff Lemire, one of our favorite writers, uh, yeah. doing some great stuff with art by, I believe, Canadian as well, Mike McCone. Uh, uh, so uh, there you go, guys. But we, on this team, we've got, let me see here, we've got Supergirl, Hawkman, Green Arrow, Stargirl, Martian Manhunter, Animal Man, and a brand new Canadian hero that is supposed to be integral to the storyline going from Zero Issue on forward for the rest of the series. So, guys, if you've been wanting uh, to try out something with the Justice League, maybe you weren't satisfied with, with the current one going on or didn't like Justice League of America, Justice League United looks like it's going to broaden the scope a little bit. Have some fun. And also with this, uh, fans of Adam Strange, here you go. Yes. Because this first adventure is going to be uh, focusing with him at the center of it. That's so, right. Brand new one. Uh, Lemire, McCone, Justice League United Zero. Check it out. Real quickly, that's a that's a uh, Forever Evil Aftermath right. kind of book. Also, there's uh, Justice League Dark. New team. Uh, yeah. Yeah. New, new leader on the team. And already they're dealing with a traitor in their midst. Already? Already. Already. Oh, <laughs> but it's also another uh, Forever Evil Aftermath. So Very cool. That's uh, That, I think, wraps it up for the uh, events. Cool beans. All right, guys. Let's move on to the question of the week. Good question. Are you ready for this? I'm always. Okay. He was amped up about it before, man. So let's, let's dive into this. Guys, the 2014 Eisner nominations have been released. I'll put a link down below to bleedingcool.com where you can see the full list of all the categories and everything that's been uh, re released for the nominations. And this question of the week is this. We're focusing on the best new series, best writer, and the best artist uh, categories. Who do you think was robbed and should have been included in those categories that wasn't in them? So uh, we got the best new series. We're looking at High Crimes, uh, Lazarus, Rat Queens, and Sex Criminals, and Watson and Holmes as being the nominated series what was what's the series you think that should have been a part of that? Um, you know I don't know. We have um, Young Avengers was to me mm -hmm. one of these books that that blew me away. That book right there, I don't know how you leave something like that off the list. That was a uh, great one. Yeah, I will. I will. Say, but uh, but uh, I, I will say I'm glad to see Rat Queens yeah. being nominated there. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was thinking. I was thinking of Young Avengers. I was also thinking of Clone. Yeah, Clone is another awesome one. And that, you know, was it wasn't on there. And uh, the other one I thought about too, which may have been, which may have came too late, was Velvet. What about uh, East of West? Uh, yeah, well, why wasn't East of West you know part of the best new series? Uh, I I don't know what the cutoff date was for that, but it would have been nice to have seen Young Avengers nominated, Clone nominated, maybe Velvet, and most definitely East of West. Yeah. Uh, so those are those are some of the ones that I think. Kind of got robbed in the spotlight there. It should have been added. Yeah. Now, best writer. So the nominees are Kelly Sue DeConnick, Matt Fraction, Jonathan Hickman, Scott Snyder, Eric Stevenson, and Brian K. Vaughn, which are some excellent writers. But yeah. there, I, I could think of one or two names that I really think should have been on there. What about you? Oh, there's a long list of names because yeah. you have people like Brian Azzarello, mm -hmm. uh, Karen Gillan, uh, Dennis Hopeless. Mm -hmm. uh, you you have Greg Rucka. He's nominated, you know, best series, but not best writer. Right, exactly. And uh, Ed Brubaker. I mean, that's just some of the names that come to mind here that we're putting out 
const- consistently good work. Exactly. And and the three that came to my mind were uh, Gillen, yeah. Brubaker, and Rucka. And like you said, it, why nominate the series if the, the writer's not nominated as well? On that same note, that uh, Curtis, how, how do you say, Curtis J. Weeb, Weeb? Weeb or something like that. Yeah. How, how is he not nominated? Because apparently that book got a lot of buzz there. Exactly. So. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So moving on to the uh, the best, well, I'm just going to say best artist. They have it nominated, yeah. set up differently. But the best artist, Nate Belgard, Nick Dragata, Sean Murphy, Nate Powell, Emma Rios, and Thomas Yeats. Uh, who would who else would you have liked to see on that list? Now, just before you you give an answer, mm-hmm. there there's within like the best painter or whatever. We do have um, Fiona Staples there, so yeah. she is, she is nominated, guys. But it, she's nominated under kind of a different list because her her art is a little different than just best penciler. Right. Uh, right. But McKelvey is the name that yes. sticks out for me. Yes. And and I'm going to throw another name out there, Hopeless. Um, partner in crime kev walker does mm-hmm. some amazing work and yeah. this guy i mean mckelvey i think has gotten some recognition in the past for some of his work i don't know if walker ever has and that guy i love his style it's different mm-hmm. but uh it's not a bad difference i like how he draws the characters uh yeah uh some names that came to my mind were mckelvey yeah the one that i really thought was robbed and i don't know if there's just a stigma because it's a big book that he's on but Greg Capullo on oh, Batman. I thought yeah. fantastic stuff there. And, and another person I thought of was Jose Juan Reap, who's doing Clone. Well, maybe even like Ivan Rice. It was Reese Rice. Yeah. He, I mean, people, He when he moved from Aquaman to mm-hmm. Justice League, that there was an explosion of people like suddenly going, who is this guy? This art is beautiful. This yeah. is amazing. So. Yeah. so, guys, there it is. That's the question of the week. Take a look at the Eisner nominees. And take a look at these uh, categories, new series, best writer, best artist, and tell us who you think should have been nominated as well. Tell us who your favorites are from the whole list. Tell us below. We want to know what you think of the nominees list for the Eisners. Try and keep it positive. Yeah, let's try to keep it positive. Yeah, let's try not... and keep it positive. <laughs> keep it positive, guys. Moving on. There's a ton of new number ones hitting the shelf this week. What would you like to start off with, sir? Uh, we've got a cool one coming out. Uh, Electra number one. That right there is going to be a very different book. Uh, I'm not familiar with either of the creators, Hayden Blackman or Mike Del Mundo, but they are going to give us a very different Electra. Yeah. And it's it's going to be, she's, I, I think, trying to break away from the person who she's been. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're talking about that uh, she is going to go places where nobody in the Marvel Universe has been able to go before. Right. I'm not sure what right. that means. I don't know if that's like a dreamscape because, or, or something because they're talking about death mm-hmm. along with this. But uh, if you've gotten to see the preview art, this is beautiful, beautiful painted art. Uh, it reminds me kind of like a David Mack or, or something with, okay. uh, you know, just he, he integrates everything within the, the page there mm-hmm. into it and it's not just a standard looking picture. So, right. Uh, I'm I'm excited about this one. Uh, I'm not sure if it will have the uh, legs it needs to stand on to be an ongoing series, but uh, we'll see if the fans pick it up and if they uh, support it. I think it's going to have a strong base in the writer because Hayden Blackman, if I'm not mistaken, was on uh, Batwoman with J. H. Williams before oh, coming over okay. uh, to do this before Mark Andreco took over Batwoman and okay. there was that creative change. So. Uh, people liked what was going on with Batwoman, so maybe they'll like what's going on here with Elektra. Okay. So we'll see. Cool. Guys, another one hitting the shelf this week, Secret Origins from DC Comics. This is a series detailing the secret origins of the DC heroes in the New 52. Yeah. So this is it. This is this is, this is is where it all starts. This is how you find out about, well, in particular this issue, you find out about Supergirl, Superman, and Dick Grayson in this issue with uh who we got writing here we got anthony bernard and uh paulo sequera and multiple and others. various others yeah. uh, there so i love the lee bromejo uh cover of beautiful. superman looks beautiful awesome cover. so guys if you're wanting to know about the origins you need to pick up secret origins uh, each issue is going to be a different one so check it out we also have coming out from dark horse conan the avenger number one uh, that picks up, I think, right where Brian Woods. Funny how he doesn't have a book coming out, but I still <laughs> mention his name. Still drop him, uh, man. <laughs> uh, I think it picks up where Brian Woods' book <clears throat> left off. Uh, we see Conan drunk and still kind of reeling from the loss of his love, Belit, <laughs> and uh, he somehow or some sort of robbery happens. Something mm-hmm. is stolen. 
I don't know if it's from him or whatnot, but he goes on a very uh, supernatural adventure. That's uh, where this picks up. We have uh, Fred Van Lint writing this and kind of the uh, perennial uh, uh, dark horse artist, Brian Ching, uh, draw drawing this book. So should be fun, should be a different take on it because uh, we'll see how closely it follows along because a lot of what Wood told were the actual uh, Robert E. Howard stories. I don't know if this is a Robert E. Howard story uh, or if this is uh, an all-new kind of story. Here. Okay, very cool. And guys, the hit TV series is about to return That's and right. I'm particularly interested in this new number one, which is 24. Number one, hitting the shelf with from IDW Publishing. And this has got a great creative team. Ed Brisson, yeah. And Michael Gatos. Yeah, both uh, awesome. Great, great writer, great artist. Uh, Michael Gatos has been around. Ed Brisson's got some stuff out on the shelf now that, that we're reading, that we're enjoying. But this series, it's a mini series, is going to take a look at what's been going on with Jack Bauer from the end of the last season of the show till now. So I'm like, yes, I want to know what that story is because I was a fan of 24. Me and my wife loved it. Loved it, loved it. We marathon it because we just couldn't watch just one episode. So with this series, we're going to see what's been going on with Jack Bauer from the end of the last season to Live Another Day, yeah. uh, the new series that comes here in May, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the 12-episode miniseries that they're going to be doing starting then. So guys, fans of Jack Bauer, fans of 24, get on board, check out this series. Answer me this. Who are you working for? Who are you working for? <laughs> Answer me! So, we've also got uh, Hero Bears, Hero Bear and the Kid. Uh, they yeah. have a new special coming out, and there, there are lots of kids' comics coming out this week. But uh, that's it for the number ones. That's it for the number ones. And guys, by viewer request, I believe it was you, Robot Human, we're going to start trying to... I love to, the uh, name. I know, I love the name. It's an awesome name. Uh, we're going to start uh, trying to integrate this into our weekly shows, and that is... What was our favorite comic from last week? So, I got a chance to, to read some stuff from last week. Randy did too. Randy, why don't you start us off? What was your favorite issue from last week? Most people are going to probably say, how could you not choose Miss Marvel, which was awesome. X-Men number 13, I believe is what it was. The okay. start of the Bloodline storyline was phenomenal. Uh, Brian Wood does a great job of... Uh, taking the Jubilee character, who mm -hmm. who used to be like the when I were when I was with the X Men, you know, that's all she used to do. Right. When I was with the X Men, when I was with the X Men, and not really a character that's grown over I don't know thirty years or, or so. Yeah, it's been. A while. She finally has has he's matured her into she's somewhere between you know just coming out of her teens and just becoming an adult kind of a character here. She yeah. now has the baby. I mean, uh, it's not you know it's an adopted baby. Uh, but she has this baby. She has a responsibility there. Uh, but she still is kind of that young girl at, at heart. So I love what he does with her character. He seems to really love him. And the best part about this book is that he takes and uh, has like about a five to six page uh, backup story. Oh. And the backup story usually focuses on the uh, younger X-Men characters. The younger X-Men characters in this one are uh, Hellion. Uh, Rock Slide, Anoli, and uh, Brood. Okay. And it just, I like that he's focusing on these young, younger characters. Nobody else really seems to, like, put them into, uh, you know, put the spotlight on them. Cool. Maybe a few in Wolverine and the X Men, but not enough here. It's it's just great the character development that he has uh, with all of them. And that, they, that was X Men number 13, I believe. 13. Yeah, so. Very cool. And awesome, that's a, awesome. Who, who writes that? Brian. Brian. Wood, I yeah, think. there it is. There it is. Yeah, and Clay Man, man. Oh yeah, that's right. You told me Clay Man was coming on board. On Very it. cool, guys. For me, last week was uh, Batman number thirty, uh, Savage City, the the first issue of the final story arc of Zero Year. And they in this issue they explain why it's called Zero Year. Okay. You see why? You see what's going on now that the Riddler has taken over Gotham, and it was an awesome approach to taking Batman to like the bare basics. And, and actually having to reintroduce him into the storyline with this mm. issue. And Greg Capullo on artwork was fantastic. I love the writing from Scott Snyder. That was my pick of the week for last week of everything that, that I got to read. So I like uh, that Batman had hair. Yes, he does. Now, because he had like the, the little shaved look for whatever. <laughs> so he finally has hair again. He can, he can part to the side. <laughs> Guys, moving on to some of our favorite comics. These are the ones that we have toward the stack, top of our stack uh, the, every week whenever they come out. And beware, 
there will probably be, be spoilers ahead. So, yeah. we're going to tell you about some of our favorites. What would you like to start off with, sir? Uh, Shelter number eight comes out. Speaking of a book that Ed Brisson is doing here, uh, this this one, I've, I've loved the, uh, the, the paranoid... Um, what what do you call it? The the conspiracy theory kind yeah. of uh, feel that this book has here, and uh, normal I- innocent people who are just trying to to earn a buck yeah. fall into the trap here. It looks like we may be having a coup that happens in this issue, yeah. and uh, we also have just I, I guess kind of extreme violence happening around uh, the, the safe haven, not necessarily in it, but around it. Right. Uh, so this is the one I always love to mention. The artist name Johnny Christmas is just my favorite name in the world here. <laughs> Uh, uh, does some awesome art, and uh, you know Ed Brisson just every single time this comes out, it's like clone. It just they kill it every issue. Yes, consistently great. Yeah, uh, guys, what I'm looking forward to the most this week, I would have to say, is The Walking Dead 126, the conclusion of All Out War. Oh, is this the conclusion? This is it. Holy this is cow. the final part. Uh, so, guys, if you got to see the last issue, you saw what Rick did to Negan, and yes, 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 yes. Yes, I'm so excited it went that way. <laughs> and guys, I want to see what happens next because I, I I just I don't know. I wonder what Rick is going to allow him, what he's going to allow to be done to Negan. Yeah. If if uh, he'll become part of the pestilence of the world or if he'll give him a proper send off. Yeah. I guess I, I should say. But guys, this has been building up. We're going to see like a, a different change of everything with this. Uh, uh, Rick Rick has been working towards putting everything together. Uh, with only Negan in the way, and it looks like we had that problem out of the way now, and now I want to see what Walking Dead is going to be like going forward. Regular Blade or Tainted Blade? Tell us what you think. I, uh, I, yeah, tell us below. If you read it, tell us what you think it was, a Tainted Blade or a Regular Blade. Yeah, we also have uh, Fantastic Four number three coming out, okay. and this right here, um, the Fantastic Four may have suffered their first loss in the uh, fall of the Fantastic Four here. Johnny Storm, I mean, will he flame on ever again? We don't know uh, if that's the case. I mean, eventually I think somebody will ride him that way. But as far as this story uh, goes, it may look like that, you know, he, he flamed on for his last time here. And uh, the exciting part, or another exciting part with this book, is we get to see an all new wrecking crew this issue. Oh, really? So, don't know uh, how that go- will go because they're kind of a fan favorite there, but we'll see. Yeah. I'm loving the book. Very cool. Next one up for me, guys. Gravel, Combat Magician, number three. Gravel is in Tokyo trying to take down a rogue combat magician who apparently is way more powerful than anybody thought. And I love love this series. This series so far has gotten off to a great start. I love... I mean, they haven't missed the characterization with Gravel. They Mm -hmm. haven't changed it. It's Gravel. It's him coming in to clean up everybody else's junk and take care of stuff because somebody else couldn't take care of it properly. But this uh, particular former combat magician apparently has an ace up his sleeve, and Gravel's going to have to use his brain to try to figure this out, and he's not very good at using his brain. He's much better at using his bullets and and just being an attacker and a fighter. So with this particular issue, we'll see how he gets uh, through this particular ordeal, and I'm loving it. Yeah. It didn't fall uh, on my, my list of like awesome books here because there are so many coming out, but we do have Lazarus number eight coming out. Yes. Uh, I don't know if this is the final issue of this story arc, just because the first one was a, a four issue story arc. This one, they may be keeping them a little shorter here, but we're, we get our first look at the daggers. Uh, they're, yeah. they're a group or, or something that, that somehow they're aligned with, uh, with, uh, forever yeah with forever so we'll see who they are how they're used uh exactly uh, with a name like the dagger you know that they're you know probably some surgical strike team that right. just cuts into it and uh gets gets what needs to be done there you know short and sweet i was wondering that man because th- yeah, they could be anything yeah they could they, they yeah. really could so i'm and looking then, forward to that yeah we also had the barretts uh suffered a major loss uh last issue yeah. here but yeah. it looks like they finally arrived where they're supposed to, or, or where they need to get to, uh, Denver being that place, and something about uh, called the lift. Don't know what exactly the lift is. We'll find out here. But this is a, uh, a, a phenomenal book. Exactly. You should be reading Lazarus yeah. if you aren't already. Yeah. First trade's out, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. First so. trade is out. Like I said, it was only four issues, so it's a it's a small trade, and I think this is this may be the conclusion just with seeing everybody kind of getting to where they need to be. Yeah. So, read it. Yep. Yeah. 
Last up for me, guys, Manhattan Projects number 20. Yes, yes, yes. And and I think Nick Pitaro was kind of robbed, too. So I'll just be honest oh. in, in that regard. Yeah. But, guys, you have to... It's like I can't talk to you unless you're already reading Manhattan Projects because it's so awesome and crazy. We just saw what was going on with uh, with Einstein and with Oppenheimer yeah. and, and how different events were just transpiring that led to that one moment where you thought there was going to be a major change in Oppenheimer and then... And then he's gone. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it yeah. was awesome. Yeah. It was so awesome. But this issue, it looks like we may, there may be some more Oppenheimer goodness coming our way. So I've got, you've got to read the series, guys. This is such an awesome, phenomenal sci fi action adventure take on the whole Manhattan Project thing. It's just awesome. Yeah. And if you don't follow Dragato Dragato on, uh, Pitaro. on P Manhattan Project. Pitaro yeah. yeah. on uh, Twitter. Look on our Facebook page. I posted a picture of his new, like, yeah. sneak peek of his new character that's going to be introduced into the series soon. Yes. I like that. Uh, last up for me, Avengers Undercover. I got it right this <laughs> yeah, time. Right. Number three is coming out here. This last book was intense. You're, you're, you see everybody just kind of falling in line yeah. with all of the villains. You're like, no, no, stop. You're not supposed to be villains. This isn't supposed to be fun for you. Exactly. And uh, then you get to the last page and you're like, oh, hell yeah. Yes. I like what I see here. So this time the children are finally face to face with the person that put them through that living hell for 30 days, Arcade. Yes. And uh, someone's not going to make it out alive here. We don't necessarily know that that means that, that that someone is going to be arcade. Right. So it right. could be someone else. This is an intense book. This is a great read. We're three issues into it. And like I said, this is already a book that I would suggest is, is a contender for the one of the best books of the year So uh, for me. I, and Batman barely edged it out for me. Because I read that, I was like, "This is oh, that was such a great issue." Maybe that was from the week previous. That was from I can't the week remember. previous. Yeah. So, but I, I got a chance to read it, and I was like, yeah. "You're right, man." It was just like they just found so many similarities, yeah. things that they had in common with so many these and, criminals. Well, the people that are just like <laughs> the criminals, willing to help them be, yeah, uh, you know, better. People, I mean, maybe so that they could be better criminals then, but right. whatever. I, I liked it a lot. It was great. It was really good. It was really, really good. Guys, all this stuff and so much more is hitting the shelf for April 23rd. So, guys, don't forget the question of the week. If you want to comment on what your favorite comment from last week was and the What We Love, What We Hate segment, log into Google Plus and leave a comment below. But uh, take a look at the uh, Eisners and tell us who you think uh, should have been included in that list and what works they do that should have been included uh we'd love to have a discussion with you about that anything else to add sir uh real quickly flash number 30 is coming out this is a new creative team on it why am i mentioning this here it didn't really fit in anywhere else because it's not an event it's not a favorite and it's not a number one but this is where we may start to see the uh in the introduction of wally west into the flash universe oh, here okay. so people be on the lookout there if you've been wondering where Wally West has been. There you go. That's a that's a great jumping on point. Yeah. Uh, Vendetti and uh, Brett Booth uh, coming on board, if I'm not mistaken, uh, for the new Flash Sound, series. Sounds about right. Yeah. And uh, be it, don't don't expect your your normal, you know, who you thought Wally West was. I think this is a different take. So okay, they're taking a chance. Very cool. Guys, we are Excalibur Comics Cards and Games here in Shreveport, Louisiana, and in Texarkana, Texas. Be sure and visit our website, Excalibur CCG. Dot com. Tons of great comics hitting the shelf. Thumbs us up, thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Uh, the MP3 is down below. Log in, comment, talk to us about this episode. We want to hear what you have to say about the Eisners and everything else that we discussed. Thanks for watching, guys. We really appreciate the engagement. Take a moment to share the video if you have a chance. And that's it for this week. Anything else, sir? That's it. Guys, until next time, take care, be safe, read great comics, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.